Hello, Team Zealers. So as I record this today, I have five sleeps till my 50th birthday. Woo! <laughs> you know, I would be lying if I told you I was 100% excited, but there's a little bit of apprehension in me to leave my 40s. So I decided to record this video for you unscripted, completely um, from the heart. And I wanted to share with you the past, the present, and the future of Kids Life Studio. And I wanted to just go back and forgive me for maybe selfishly doing this, but I just needed to reflect back on what has brought me to this moment today with five sleeps to go till my 50th birthday. <laughs> so if I look back, and obviously you know some of my journey and you've walked some of that journey with me, but I look back when I started Kids Life Coaching, it was born literally out of a passion. I was that classroom school teacher, always getting myself into trouble because I was a voice for children. Now, I know that you would not be listening to this video if you were not the same in some way, a bit of a disruptor, a children's change maker, somebody who speaks up for the injustices and the rights of children. You, you are one of those people. We are kindred spirits, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this. So I look back and not much has changed <laughs> because as I walked through my journey of establishing kids life coaching as a niche, you know, when I started coaching in 2003, there were no other kids coaches. I developed my play-based coaching system and I'm super proud of that, not because I want the recognition, but because I really put my love and heart into what I was creating. And I did it because I wanted to create this ripple effect in my local community. It didn't start knowing that I was going to be speaking to you <laughs> um, in a different country in the world. That's not how I started. I started literally just wanting to help my local community. And as I've gone through the years, I've realized I have continued with that persona of being a disruptor, of being somebody who questions the status quo, somebody who doesn't take things at face value, somebody who sees strengths in children rather than their weaknesses, somebody who wants to enhance a child rather than fix what may be perceived as wrong. And that's just me. And so when I went back to university at the age of 45, no, I think I was 46. I, I graduated at 47. I got my master's in clinical child psychology. That was a huge, huge turning point for me. I went back because during COVID, I was really, really struggling myself. I was struggling with my own mental well-being and I, I really didn't do well in COVID. I don't know about you, but I didn't do well. I don't do well with people telling me what to do and how to do it. And that was a time of being told what to do and how to do it. And so I really came out of the lockdown, which in the UK was quite rigorous for a whole year. We had very strict protocols of not being able to travel to certain places. And it was just really quite hard. And I asked myself the question, if I struggled as much as I did, what about parents who had children looking up to them during that time. What impact has that had? And that's what made me go back to university and go and find those answers. And I interviewed 12 year olds around the world, asking them not what went wrong in COVID, but I wanted to know what went right. I spoke to children who were buffered by good, when I say good in inverted commas, there's no perfect family, but by good families who, where there was no divorce present, there was no poverty pre present, no abuse present. The lifestyle assessment showed me that they lead uh, or led a, a healthy, well-balanced lifestyle. And so I interviewed these kids and what came up was that the family was most important to them. The family is a bedrock of support. And that the most important to them was playing with their family during this time. And this just consolidated my purpose of putting play at the center of everything we do as kids life coaches. And so I started pushing more of a play agenda after that. Before that, it was always about coaching children, emotional intelligence, skills training, life skills. And I kind of shifted into the play-based space. And, and I, I really became interested in what this did. And I was especially interested in intergenerational play. 
intergenerational play is when we have somebody like us as a kids life coach using play-based activities with younger children and learning between each other so that degree really got me thinking but what it really did was it consolidated that we were on the right track everything that I'd done intuitively as a school teacher and a school counselor a special needs teacher Everything I'd done intuitively was right. It was backed up by research. And I hadn't even read most of the research before designing the program. I did it out of heart, out of my gut feel. And my master's degree consolidated that we were on the right track. So I started re-engineering our Kids Life Coach certification to be more academic. And I went back to university to do my doctorate. I've been at Oxford, as you know, for almost two years now. Can you believe that? And it hasn't been an easy journey. What I've realized is the way I see the world and the way you see the world and the way many people see the world when it comes to children is that we understand that children are intuitive beings. They have intuitive resilience and they can figure out solutions with tour guides. Being in the psychiatry department has been wonderfully rewarding because there's people doing amazing work and mental illness is something that needs addressing. We have to maintain mental well-being in young people, but this epidemic, this explosion of mental illness in children, I don't think, and I'm saying this very lightly because I cannot back this up with concrete evidence, but this is my intuition. I don't think that the psychology and the psychiatry fraternity are moving in the right direction. They are moving in a direction, and that is to not label as much as they used to, to see trauma as the precursor to most of the labels we are seeing in children. But this explosion that we are seeing is because we are speaking about mental illness too much. And that is why I'm calling upon you today in the present, because we've looked at the past and how I got here in the present, to start speaking hope into our young people, to speak possibility into our young people, to speak joy, engagement, love, life, playfulness into our young people. It's not about what's going wrong. It's about what's going right. It's about opportunities and what they can do with those opportunities. You can travel to the poorest poorest village in the world and you will find children who are happy and laughing with little more than a t-shirt on their back that may be ripped and torn no shoes no toys to play with using sticks and stones to engage but those children are happy so what we need to really look at in the present moment is how we can engage better as kids life coaches in how we show up as coaches. Are we buckling to the system and seeing only what's going wrong? Are we believing what is being told to us in the media about all these problems? Or are we going to elevate and amplify our voices? Not to make money as a kids life coach, because that will come, not to drive it with ego and get the recognition and win awards. No, this is about us collectively standing up in our own corner of the world, in our own lane, being our own person, speaking up for the rights of children. If we look at the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child, it clearly states that every child has a right to play. And through play-based coaching, we are giving children that right. And if you are not busy in your coaching practice, I want you to look at what it is you have been busy with. Are you busy with the superficial stuff? The stuff that actually in the greater scheme of things, the, the next social media post, the next reel on TikTok, whatever it is, is that important? Or is showing up in your local community and planting seeds there where you are important? And, you know, that may look different to all of us. There, there's different journeys for all of us. But the present moment is ours for the taking. And because the UN has now made International Play Day a day on the 11th of June, I think we should get onto the map and we should together really engage and connect as a, a global network and really do something special in our local community, not to get media attention, 
but to really amplify the good work that is already happening out there. So let's fast track to the future because I've touched a little bit on the future. The 11th of June, doing something together. You know, when I started the Kids Life Studio, it was for me. It was to fulfill my possibility to be a change maker for children. And now I have the privilege of working alongside all of you. And I'm here to stay. And although I may hand over the reins to somebody else to do the bits and pieces in KLS, my heart sits with the ethos of who we are. And that is we are a relationship driven organization. But I know then in order to maintain that in the future, I have to look back at the past. And I haven't been that good in maintaining relationships with some of you, with some of my clients, with maybe people in the research community. And this is my commitment to you today, is that today, with five sleeps to go to my 50th, I'm going to recommit to my original vision. My original vision was to create a world where children could just be children. And my purpose is to rebrand childhood. So the future for me is to amplify my voice. And I'd love to do that alongside you. So if you want to hop on board, by all means, hop on board. If you want to do it alone, do it alone. That's fine. But what I'm asking is to do it with integrity, honesty, love, and ethics. That's what's missing in our world. You know, we're not in this world to make it better for ourselves and our families only. That's a very important part of what we do. We are in this world to make it better for the people around us. And what seeds are we planting collectively? Because I think we stop doing that. And there's no secret to the fact that I've been having vision problems and surgery and all sorts of things going on with my eyes that has really been debilitating and been limiting my ability to work. And I realized there's no the secret to the fact that my body has been trying to tell me, Zelna, get back on track with your original vision with children. I cannot help but feel so fired up today as I look at the past, the present, and the future. What the future holds for us is up to us. It's not up to me. It's up to us how we amplify our voices, where you show up how you speak, how you engage with your community and what you are doing in your community. I want you to really look at how you engage with your ego. <laughs> Gosh, my ego and I, we, we're good buddies, right? And we all need ego to be our driver to success. But when your ego overtakes your purpose and your passion, it can become a shadow on what it is you were put on this earth to do. So I want you to check your ego like I do every day. And I want you to step into your true self, that true you that has a mission on this earth. And I know we would not be together. You would not be listening to this recording if you did not share that in some way. No matter how that looks to you, I want you to take your dreams that you may have been shelving. I want you to take your excuses as to why you can't succeed in the future. I want you to step in with trust, all in, and trust that the future will be as it needs to be. As a kid's life coach, it's in your hands. And today I showed up for you, speaking from the heart, completely unscripted, because I truly, truly care about what we do collectively as an organization. And we've lost too many good people in our organization because they couldn't afford the membership fee, they didn't want to attend supervision meetings, somebody else made them a better offer financially. That's all good, but I want to open the doors and welcome you back in. Welcome you back into the fold because my vision has not changed. I still want to reach millions of children around the world, but I've realized now that in the future, that may not be measurable for me. Because I don't know how many children you are all reaching. I don't know the ripple effect of what we do. For instance, on Saturday, I attended a women's luncheon. And I spoke to a young lady who's in corporate. And she's very dynamic, a high achiever. And she says she has this dream of supporting young people. And she's been sponsoring a young person through school for a good few years now. She says she feels embarrassed that she pays the bills, but she's never, ever once written a letter or engaged with this young person to ask how they are, to offer them mentorship and support. And I said to her, you know what? 
well done for acknowledging that. Well done for seeing that this child needs you as their secret parent. She said to me, Zelna, what can I do now to make a difference? And I said, you know what? Go and volunteer. Go back to Holland. She's from the Netherlands. Go back and volunteer to read in an orphanage. Go back and volunteer to be part of a sports team. All of us, where we are planted, can make a difference. So kids' life coaching, as it stands, is not just for us as practitioners. It's for everybody. So plant those seeds in everybody you meet, that we are the secret parents. We are the people who are rebranding childhood collectively. And I know I'm a visionary, and I know I'm a hot air balloon that sees these big, beautiful things. But I know that collectively we can shift the needle on this. And the good news is, is that in the past 20 years of doing this, the needle has shifted. Kids life coaching is no longer a nice to have. It's a must have. It's necessary. And people are jumping on board. They're jumping on the bandwagon. There's so many organizations now doing training for people who want to work with children. You chose Kids Life Studio because we had a collective mission. So I want to say thank you today. As I go into my 50th year, I want to say, watch the space. <laughs> I'm not making big promises because it's not about the big things we do. It's about our small micro actions that we take in our community day by day. So stop being so hard on yourself. Pat yourself on the back for what you've done right. And just engage with where you're at. Look at your past. Look at your present. Look at your future. But do it with gratitude. Do it with joy. Do it with playfulness. And on that note, I'm over and out. And I'm going to take some time off over the Easter weekend. And I really wish you so much excitement as we start April together. And I, I just have to warn you, I do celebrate my birthday for a month. My birthday is on the 2nd of April, but I celebrate for a month. So I'm going to be popping in and out and, and vibing and having that happy vibe. But I think we should all take that on as our ethos for not just our birthday month like I usually do and make that part of who we are and how we show up. And if you haven't been showing up as that best version of yourself, ask yourself why, what can you do to further improve what it is that you need to be doing when it comes to working with children? If your coaching practice isn't working, ask yourself why? Maybe you're not showing up as the best version of you. So show up in our mentorship sessions which I wanted to mention are going to take a little bit of a spin. So I've saved this for the last part of this recording, which has gone on much longer than I thought it would. So thank you for sticking with me. So we've noticed that people are busy. Since COVID, people are busy. They struggle to maintain attendance in our live sessions, especially because of time zone differences. So you're going to be getting recordings like this once a week from me. And that will be your Teaching Tuesday session. And these will be put in the membership and you will have access to those on tap whenever you can make them, okay? So there will be no more live Tuesday sessions, but there will be a live Thursday session. So we're going back to how we used to be. We used to only have one live session on a Thursday, alternating between 9 and 4 p.m. UK time. So we're going back to that. And in those sessions... I will be hosting and some of you will also come in as guests to feature your case studies and tools and techniques that you want to share. But in those sessions, we're also going to go back to looking at our challenges, looking at the skills that we need and looking at best practices and professional supervision, a Q&A style call. I've thought long and hard about this and I hope that you see the reason why we are recording one session in the week and doing one live, because I think it's going to create more momentum. We'll have more people present, more people able to commit to one hour a week as opposed to two hours in a week. And I commit to doing your one video a week like this, where you'll have some training and some support and some mentorship. I don't want you to see me as the oracle that knows it all, because I don't. But I'm a constantly learning, lifelong learner. And I'm constantly growing alongside you. And so I want you to bring me questions. I want you to tell me what you need. And I will meet you where you're at. So let's engage in this dialogue. Let's open this dialogue. Let's work together. I want to see you showing up in those sessions on a Thursday. Come, bring your case studies. Bring your questions. Bring your burning issues. And let's engage collectively as a group 
We are also going to be speaking, and I'm not sure which date it's scheduled for. Sorry, I should have been more organized. But we're also going to be speaking in one of these sessions on a Thursday about what we can do collectively for Play Day, International Play Day, so we can really amplify our voices collectively. And um, I'm really excited about that. So look out for the events that are listed on our website. So you'll see the themes there of what I'm going to be teaching on a Tuesday and what I'm going to be doing on Thursdays and when we have guests. And thank you for those of you who volunteer your time to be guests. All of you are invited to do that. If you feel like you have value to add, please do offer your time and your expertise. And yeah, I'm so looking forward to this future that we have together. I've never lost my commitment and my moment, my, my, my momentum, that was a mouthful, when it comes to supporting children and moving forward into the future. The future is ours. The future is ours for the taking. So let's do it. We've got this. So I look forward to seeing you in our Thursday sessions, which will be live. And I look forward to sharing expertise and skills and best practices and teachings in my Tuesday sessions, which I think will hopefully bring you back bad case studies that will help you to see what's good about what you're doing. I want you to step into that and learn and grow and do your professional development. Every one hour you spend with me is one continuous professional development point that goes towards your uh, accreditation. And you need to have at least 30 of those in a year to maintain your professionalism. So come and join me in this journey. Let's spread happiness. Let's spread joy. Rebranding childhood is about resilience, coping, and well-being. And all of you have showed up to do that. And so I want to say thank you. So take care and I will chat soon.